let's go. Hey there gorgeous friend Ruse. in today's episode we are gonna create glass itself. We're gonna take sand, burn it. <laughs> However, they create glass, I'm not sure. But we, there's this popular glass design that you see on the interwebs. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, here it is. So you have that big kind of like glass UI design and you have abstract shapes in the background that kind of blur out when it's under the glass. And it just looks very clean and very frosty. I like that Windows Vista 7 look. Windows Vista 7, that's not the thing. We should make it. So this is a design trend that you're gonna see out there and I thought I'd covered because it's pretty cool. So if you ever want to use it in your next project, let me show you how you can put it together. Let's go. Okay, so open up your favorite editor Figma or you can use Adobe XD2 so we can put together this design. And I've thrown together a couple of versions here. Uh, the first one is where kind of everything in the background is like a linear gradient that's kind of blurry, but I don't think that works just as nice as having some abstract shapes in the background. So as you can see, when you have some kind of abstract shapes, you're gonna get this interesting frosty effect in the background where you have the glass. So I actually suggest you creating an abstract background or just go on the Googles and search up like go like Google abstract wallpapers or something like that, right? Like kind of those phone wallpapers like this, right? And you get these nice shapes and then you get the nice blur effect. However, we are gonna create it from scratch. So you don't have to worry about it. So we're gonna replicate this. So the first step that you need to do is go here to the frame tool, click frame, drag a do. All right, doesn't matter the size because we're gonna resize this mother love. Um, <laughs> what's with my swagger today? Uh, we're gonna go up here in the corner and just say 1920 by height 1080, all right? Just like that. Just make it a 1080p. Perfect. So now what I do is I search up some colors and I covered this in the color theory, but if you don't know, and if you didn't watch, basically go here to Adobe Color. I like to work with Anagalus. So I just choose that and just find some kind of colors. I went to this kind of aqua teal kind of color here and then I choose this green this and this all right and you can do this by just dragging this maybe you want kind of a purplish kind of accent like this the one I made here right so just go there and then you can copy those values and you are good to go all right so that's what I'm gonna do so we're gonna go here to the frame one I'm gonna call this up here glass tutorial tutorial like that okay and then make sure you click on the frame up here I'm actually gonna close these up so they don't bother you like that uh, and on here I click on it I go here to the fill I go to linear and again if you're creating a website out of this you can just go and add a linear gradient to your background so everything should be kind of pretty simple if you've done some kind of web development before um, and I'm just gonna choose the colors that I picked. So this one and the blue one, like that. Now this is gonna be quite boring on it in, in of itself. Is that how people say it? In of itself? Yeah. Um, so what I like to do is actually just grab some eclipses and drag out holding shift, all right? To make sure it doesn't go wobbly wobbly like that. Just drag out some big ass circles like that and I'm gonna add a gradient to this as well so linear and here what I'm gonna do is actually pick out the green and I'm gonna pick up the darker blue here so I'm gonna go see I kind of forgot the colors of this already but just a darker color here like that all right I'm gonna bring up the opacity here and the reason why I'm doing this is so I can go here to the effects. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go here and change this to layer blur and just pop this sucker up to the max or like 250 or something like that. All right. And I'm going to just drag this up, make it bigger. This is going to add some variation to our background so it doesn't look that flat. All right. So I'm going to drag this up. I'm going to hold alt and just drag. So that's going to duplicate it. I'm going to kind of fidget around with this to get some interesting colors in here. All right, so drag this around. All right, so something like that. So it doesn't look that flat anymore. Again, if you just download the wallpaper, it doesn't really matter, but we're gonna go with this. As you can see, this is a bit different, but 
who cares? Okay, so we're gonna also add these shapes, but before we do that, let's just make the main card here. So actually what I'm gonna do is take these eclipses, I'm gonna group them together and just call this background, and I'm gonna lock it so I don't accidentally click on those big circles. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna go to the rectangle tool here and just drag out a beautiful rectangle. Yes, let's make it larger a bit. Now, if you wanna get super advanced, not super advanced, but to keep everything consistent, well, you can go here to the glass and you can add a layout grid and change this to uh, columns. Go up here to something like 12 and just kind of make it and adjust it so it has a specific size. I'm gonna YOLO everything here uh, just to keep this a bit fast, but you know, you can watch the previous web design tutorials and if you are interested in positioning things nicely, but I'm not gonna waste your time with that now. So, what is my light doing? Work, it's not working properly. Okay, so let me just get rid of this for now. Okay, so just create a rectangle, and this can be a div on your website, make it white, and then you're gonna go here and change it to a linear gradient, and you're gonna do from one end to another. So the way I like to do it, again, this is kind of subjective here, but I like to do it from up left to down right, like that. Okay, and the values here that I'm gonna pick, again, are kind of subjective. You're gonna see different kinds of alternatives here, but I like to do 80% and 20% down here. So 20% down here, okay? So that equals to 100% in total to give some kind of balance to this whole shebang. Okay, so next up, just like on this one, what I do after I add the linear gradient, I also lower the opacity to something like 60, all right? That's gonna lower the whole thing down. Perfect. Now, what I can do is also add a bit of a um, stroke to this, to outline it. So go here to the stroke, click plus, change the color to white, like that. Now I'm gonna increase the size to something like three here, just like that. And I'm also gonna add a gradient to this, so linear, all right, drag it the same way, just like that. Perfect, all right, so it starts very sharp up here, not sharp at all here, and then lower this to something like 60 as well, all right, to blend it all nicely together. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna go here to the frame, now this is not necessary, but I like to add a bit of a border radius to this. I'm gonna choose 30. And I'm gonna do the same thing to this glass here. So I'm gonna go up to 30, like that, all right? It just makes everything look a bit smoother. I don't know, I prefer this look much more than straight edges. Okay, next up, here's the magic. I'm just gonna drag out a rectangle here and add a color to it so you can see, all right? Like that, I'm gonna drag this right below underneath it by the way, I'm gonna grab this up up rectangle here, our glass, and I'm gonna rename it to glass. Now on this glass, I'm gonna go to effects, and I'm gonna choose background blur like that, and pump this mother level up to like a hundred. <laughs> Something's wrong with me today. Okay, so there we go, and there we go. We get that cool glass effect straight away. And that's pretty much it. Now you can kind of you can kind of customize it the way you want. So if I wanna add these circles, I can do that very easily now. I can just go here and add a eclipse. I'm gonna drag this out just like that, make it bigger, smaller. I'm gonna drag it down here. And now I can copy the settings from this class. I can right click, copy, and I can do copy properties. Or you can do Control Alt C and Control Alt V. So let me just do that and paste it here. And there we go, we have that nice circular effect. I'm gonna change this up a bit. I'm just gonna go here to the fill and just lower this to zero, like that. So one side of the gradient is down to zero, like that. I'm just gonna kind of rotate it around like that. And I'm also gonna bump up this one actually to like 100, just so it's the effect is more visible a bit. You can do, again, different colors, different... You can drop anything you want in the background here. It doesn't really matter. So 
let me just drag out another one somewhere like that. All right, play around with this, have fun. Come up with your own shit. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Something like that. So now for this section of our page, I can again basically just copy paste um, this glass effect. So I can do another rectangle here like this. Okay, I'm gonna match it up like that. There we go. I can do the 30 again. So let's do 30. Now, actually, as you can see, this kind of covers everything up. So what you can do here is a little magic trick is what if I want this to be only on the inside of this div, right? Or on the inside of this glass. Now, what you can do, let me just move this away, is I can grab this glass and just duplicate it. So here we have the glass here, duplicate it like that. So we have two glasses. Now I can take this and hit this mask tool up here, use as mask. All right. So now everything um, that's above here. So as you can see, this rectangle, which is this part, which we can also rename to dashboard is going to be inside this glass. All right. So let's just drag this here like that. All right. Perfect. So now I can just go here to this glass and I can again copy the settings and paste it on this one right here, just like that. All right. So we basically duplicated this. And let's also, let's see what we're going to do here. Let me just move this back. Now that we have that going, I think I made straight edges here. I guess we can do that like that. All right, good. Now I just took a picture of myself in a circular fashion, which I'm just going to copy down here. It's no big deal. Again, you can position these nicely. I'm just going to do it quite fast right now. And yeah, just drop information about what you want. Let's grab a text here. I think I wrote my name here. So let's do my name. There we go. Choose a pretty font. I'm going to do Poppins. Let's do 16 or 18. There we go. Make sure we are legal. And there we go. Drag it up here. All right. I'm going to do medium just like that. Now this kind of looks harsh. I, I'm not really a big fan of it. Just pure black like that. And even I don't even find like gray looking that good on this kind of design. For some reason, I don't know. It just doesn't hit my eye the way it's supposed to. Maybe I'm being too skeptical of myself, but I think adding a little color to the text is going to make it look better. So I'm going to go with like this bluish color. So I'm going to go here to the bluish. And I'm just going to do like a dark, dark blue like that. I think it just blends together uh, because it kind of has that effect of the text having a, I should say the glass having a hole, <laughs> you know? So like <laughs> you have a blue background and you have the glass and it's like you're cutting out. Never mind. Okay. So there we go. Actually, can you do that thing with the, let me see here. Let me just do something really quickly. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. So as you can see that kind of effect where you blend it with the background. So it looks like there's a hole in the glass. Okay. Never mind. Let's just go back here to normal. I just like to choose like a dark color of whatever is in the background. And yeah, same goes to everything else here that I did. So I did another text down here because I'm a pro member, pro gamer like that. Just the regular font here and made it smaller like that. And I guess let me just position this nicely here. I guess we can go bold here to give a bit more contrast. Okay, whatever you want. And then I had some icons. Let me just quickly show you how I made these. Um, pretty easy. I use, if you don't know me, I use icon monster. It's my favorite. And here I just got icons like Twitch, 
like any gaming related, I don't know, this is kind of like a dashboard for keeping stats of the games that you play and the progress or something like that, who cares? Uh, kind of like a Discord maybe or something. Um, so I just got the icons from here. All right, so let me just, actually, let me just do one and then we'll copy paste the rest. So I'm gonna download this one. So what I did here is I just dragged this in, the design here, I resized them to something like 50 or whatever, and then drag it here. Again, position everything nicely, blah, blah, blah. Um, I have the icon, I open it up, and as you can see in here, we have the vector shape. All right, if you go here to the icon itself and you try to change the colors, it works. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> oh, never mind. It didn't work previously if you just go here to the fill and change it up. As you can see, that just adds it to the background. So for simplicity, just go inside the icon monster and you have the vector in here, and then you can just choose the feel, feel, the feel, choose the feel, and then go here to linear gradient. And again, we're gonna keep it consistent and do that side to side kind of gradient. And I just choose the colors that I used up here, like that. All right, which is gonna give a bit more consistency to our design. And then again, I just added some text like my streams or something like that, added a regular font or whatever I used, medium. And for this one, I actually did a more opened up color. So I just went to this dark blue that I used and I just opened it up a bit like that, just like that. All right, so these are basically my two contrasty fonts. Uh, one is a dark blue and one is a open blue. All right, and that's pretty much it. So I did this to all of them right here. So I'm just gonna copy this over right here. All right, drag it down. Uh, if you wanna center it here, what you can do is grab all of these and then just hold shift and click on this, this part, right? So this section, and then just go here and align it to the middle. And that actually doesn't work, fantastic. Uh, Cause it kind of moves these around. So what I can also do is just grab these right here individually click, 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 holding shift, and just click align to the left like that. And then I'm just gonna drag it to the middle here. Okay, so something like that. Um, maybe we can move these up a little bit like that. And maybe there's too much space between these, so let me move these up a little bit. All right, and then we can grab all of them and I can just go here up and say distribute vertical spacing. Perfect. Okay, and now down here, I have this join pro blah, blah, blah thing. So again, what I did was pretty much just create another, another rectangle down here like that, adding the linear gradients to it like that and just pretty much copy pasted everything I did there. So 30 radius, uh, pick those colors like that, added some text here and I got a controller illustration of the internet. Okay, so super, super simple. Nothing too crazy here. Hey, where's my controller? They stole it from me. Why you do this? Why you do this? Where is it? It's not here. All right, get your ass here. Bang. There we go. Fantastic. So that's the last step here. And then what I did was I just created these cards to kind of represent the progress you made in the games. So again, I just kind of picked that same font that I have here, just made it bigger. So let me copy paste it here. Again, you can position these nicely so they make sense maybe here with the logo. So I, I think I made this like 42. My nose is itchy. Active games, like that. Bam, ba, -dum, ba bam, easy peasy. Lemon squizano. And then I did the search thing, which as you can see again, it kind of uses that glass look. So we can just do a, we can drag out a rectangle here. Control V, that didn't work. Never mind delete this video. 
Let me just hit Control Alt Control C on the glass, paste the glass right here, and boom, easy. Just like that. I grabbed a search icon of the internet. This is the original. And again, I kind of like to do, even if this is harsh, the text and you don't like it, I feel like with this glass design, actually just adding a 90 opacity or 80 opacity to this just kind of blends it together more nicely and makes it look, so, just makes it look a bit better. So just 90 opacity on the text. Let's do 90 here. And I guess we can make this a bit more visible because it kind of blends too much in together, something like that. Anyways, so even to this, just add a bit of 90 opacity for more blendiness. And same thing to this. So I can grab the same color here, just blend this more. Let's do 60. Whoops. 60. There we go. As you can see, maybe even more on this because we don't really care about this as much. There we go, like 40. See, it just blends in together much nicely. Um, and here we can add again a text or something that says search. So let's do search like that. Make sure we drag it up in here. Grab this color for the blending. Make the text super small like that. Make sure you position this with equal spacing, but you already know that. Okay, so something like that. Okay, and lastly for the cards, I, like this looks white, but I still like to add a bit of gradient to this. I pretty much add gradient to everything when I create these glass designs. And what I also like to add is drop shadow. I think it's very important to add drop shadow to this uh, because this glass effect, I feel like it works better with drop shadow because it gives it that 3D look. So as you can see, it looks like these cards are just kind of popping out a bit out of the background. Whereas if I remove it, so let me just go here and just hide this. As you can see, it looks a bit flat. I mean, I guess that look is nice as well, but I like this effect of, of, of these cards kind of pop, popping, popping out. And when you have things also in the background getting blurred out, it just gives a super, super cool effect. So let me just go back here. So super simple, just grab, drag out, rectangle here again position these nicely uh, just like that and then add the radius like we did previously here i'm actually gonna go white we're not gonna copy the glass effect over like that and what i do here is again do a linear up to the corner all the way down here ah where is it here and I pick something like 80, like that. And down here, I pick something like 60. All right, it might not look good because once we add the drop shadow, this can look kind of finicky. Maybe this is too blurred out, but we're gonna see. Uh, too, too less opacity. Uh, we might need to add some opacity back. Let's just add the, the drop shadow because that's where we're gonna see. As you can see, it looks weird as hell. So if I go here to X, I'm just going to move it to the side here, like eight, six, and the Y just a bit down and then add a bit of blur to this like that. Let me actually lower the blur to something like 10. Just move the X up a bit and the Y up a bit. So as you can see, it looks weird because we don't have opacity on this. So if I go here and just move the opacity down to zero as, as you can see it looks weird so what i like to do is just kind of go up here and kind of stop at the point where it doesn't look that weird anymore so i guess 80 and i think i'm gonna just do 100 up on this end so up 100 like that all right so there we go something like that actually I did a better job here let me just see what i did here oh okay so since we're, I actually did this wrong, because what we're doing here is the drop shadow is on this end, right? So down here and here, we don't really have that much drop shadow. So to make this look better, we can move the part where the opacity is higher, where the drop shadow lies. 
All right, so basically what I'm gonna do is just go here to the linear gradient and switch these up like this, okay? So now here where there's a bunch of drop shadow, it doesn't look grayish and ugly. And here where we're going to transparent, it's not gonna look that weird because we barely have any drop shadow up here. All right, so it looks a bit better. Um, I guess we can also lower the opacity on the drop shadow because this effect does not need to be that intense. So something like 10 pixels. And I guess we have more leeway to mess around with this. Again, for, for this, you kind of just need to mess around and see what looks good. Um, it can be quite tricky to make this look super, super pretty. But something like that, 80. Let me see if I can mess around with this a bit. Now nah, I'm going to leave it at 100. Okay, so something like that. Okay, let's make this thick like that. And then I just add text on it and an image. So if you want to add an image like that and make it in a rectangle, it's super simple. Again, we're going to use the masking. So just make a shape like this, add a rounded corner to it, 30 or whatever, 20. And then just add, click the mask here. So it's going to disappear. But now if you drag any kind of image over it, so I have this Puderman image here. As you can see, it kind of goes inside of it. All right, so if I drag this here, as you can see, there's that icon on this thing that shows that basically anything on top is gonna be masked to it. So if I drag this image on top and drag it here, boom, we have a simple mask. And then I just added some text all right, Sackboy, whatever, Assassin's Creed, Spider-Man. And to make this graph, it was quite simple. All you have to do is just drag out again another rectangle. Now, if you don't see the rectangle, you'll be like, why is this not appearing? Well, careful, because basically the mask that we made masks everything that's on top. So everything that you create from now on, so if I do a rectangle here, if I do some text, it's not gonna appear because it goes here on top, right? So to not have this issue, so again, whenever you create a mask and you add the image to it or whatever, make sure you grab that mask and the image, so these two things, and group them up, all right? Uh, avatar or something. So now when you create another shape or something, it doesn't mask, mask it. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Uh, so then we just add a border radius to this. I added again the linear gradient that we have used 20 billion times, bajillion, bajillion, like that. Boom, shebang, shebang. There we go. Duplicate this, like that. Just drag it down like this. Change this to a solid gray color. And then I take this part and just open up here the border radius. You can actually expand this and just add zero to a corner here and then go to the end here and also zero and boom, you just made a progress bar super fast. And that's pretty much it. Just add the text, add the percentage of how much you completed the game. And again, just linear gradients everywhere and you are pretty much done. I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna bother copying this over because this is the final result. Okay, so you can apply this to all of your projects. You can, I don't know, there's a bunch of them out there on the internet that are fabulous looking. So if you want that Windows Vista look, feel free to try it out. 28 minutes, wow. Whew. Okay, so we're starting off the year. I think this is gonna be like one of my last few tutorials here on design. I think maybe we're gonna do one or two more. I'm gonna do game design and game development and stuff like that. Now, be warned, I'm, I, I barely know any game development, haven't done any, so I might actually start filming some episodes on my journey to becoming a game developer or something like that. I'm not becoming a game developer, but just building out games for fun, because that's what we're doing here on this channel. We're making fun stuff. I hope so. Maybe, maybe not. 
Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're interested in learning web development and stuff like that, I have courses on HTML, JavaScript, React. I have a bundle too at a great price. So if you're interested, click down in the link below to get one of them. I will appreciate it. And until next time, shabang shabang. Goodbye.